Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of Math with Mr. Stevens. Uh, today we're going to continue in Module 4. You are going to need that as well as a pencil in order to complete some of this. So, we are continuing to look at linear equations. We're continuing to look at the graphs of linear equations. These graphs that we are moving into, though, these are a little bit different than the lines that we have seen in the past and the lines that we have dealt with in finding the equation of in the past. We're going to see why. It's not totally different, but it is different enough that it requires a different strategy that we are going to use and practice to find the equation of this line. So we're going to start on page 257. So we'll open up to, too far, to 257, and we're going to jump into really the middle here of lesson 21 in these exercises. We're going to start with lesson or number two at the bottom of page 257. So, as we've been using linear equations, we have been identifying the equation through the slope and the y-intercept. We're going to continue to do that. The difference is, is with these lines, we are not given a clear value for the y-intercept. All of the other lines we've dealt with so far, we have been able to very clearly identify what the value of the y-intercept is, what the value of that point is that crosses at, at the line. Here, we do not have a very clear determining y-intercept. Okay, We can see where it belongs. It goes in between it goes in between the 7 and the 8 here on this y-axis, but we don't have an actual value. It doesn't go through a whole line or a whole number value on this line. So what we're going to have to do is change the way we do things a little bit, just a little bit. Instead of starting with our y-axis as we normally do or our y-intercept as we normally do, we are going to identify two points on this line. Sometimes the lines they give you will only have two points. This, this line in particular has three that you could potentially use. So I'm going to use this point here, and I'm going to use this point here, okay? Just those two. They cross through at whole values. We have up here at 2, 8, and we have over here at negative 3, positive 7. These are our two coordinates for these two points. You could also use the third point over here. I'm not going to worry about it. So this is our first step. Step number one is to identify your two points, any two points on this line that you know the value of. From here, we're going to find the slope. So to get from this point to our next point, we go up one, and we go to the right. What is that? Five? Yeah, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be up one to the right five. And so when we put these two numbers together as our slope, we're going to say m is equal to one-fifth. This is going to be your first step. So put a little one, zero, or a one with a little circle over it for step number one, is to find your slope. We've done this lots of different times. So there's lots of different examples, lots of different videos that I've created that are all, also out there for you to practice finding your slope. Here, we should already know how to do that, so do it. Find your slope going from point to point. Step two is you are going to take your slope and you're going to plug it into your equation. So your equation is y equals mx plus b. That's kind of the basis of any linear equation, at least in slope-intercept form. And we're going to take one-fifth and plug it in for m. So now our equation looks like this, y equals one-fifth x plus b. Okay, this is step two, is to plug that into your equation for m. Now, normally, we already have our b in here, and this is kind of our last step, and we're done with the equation. Here, we don't have a b yet. We know where it should go. It should go somewhere between 8 and 7, but we need to find the actual value. So in order to do that, we're going to do something a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Instead of just being able to identify where b is, we now have to solve for b. And the way we're going to do that is by using this right here, our equation, y equals 1 fifth x plus b. And we're going to take one of our two points. It doesn't matter which point. You can take this point, you can take this point, you can even take this point over, way over here. You can take any of your points, and you're going to plug both your x value and your y value into the equation to make this work. So this is how we're going to do this. I'm going to take the one, this particular problem has two positives. I always go two positives if possible. Just makes it easier. This point right here is 2, 8. I'm going to use this point to plug into my equation. 
my equation being the x and the y value from our slope intercept form. So, step three, when you're done, should look like this. 8 equals 1 fifth times 2 plus b. Okay? So, we're going to call this step three. All we did was replace y with h and x with 2 from this point here. You can do the same thing over here. If you put negative 3 in for x and 7 for y, you can do the same thing. It doesn't matter which point you use. As long as your slope is correct and you plug your points in correctly, you will be able to find the same value. Now what we have to do is we just have to do this multiplication. 1 fifth times 2 is 2 fifths plus b equals 8. We'll call that step 4. Step five now is just, to going, is just going to be solving for b. We're just going to isolate b by subtracting two-fifths from both sides. So two-fifths minus two-fifths gives us zero, which still leaves b over here. And then eight minus two-fifths. So you can do this one of two ways. You can just do this from a whole value and then subtract the two-fifths away. Or you can turn eight into a fraction over five. Eight or a fraction with a denominator of 5 and a value of 8. So it would look something like this. A value of 8 but a denominator over 5 should make this value over here 40. So you would have 40 over 5 minus 2 fifths, which is going to give you 38 fifths. It's going to be equal to b. So, this is how we solve for b when we don't know what it is, when we can't clearly identify what it is. But we're not quite done. We need to write the equation. So that means taking our point, our, or taking our value for b and taking our slope for m that we put into these, this equation here. And then this is going to be our final answer. So our equation should be y equals 1 fifth x plus 38 fifths. Just like that. That is our equation for this line. This is the process, following these steps line by line. There's also other types of problems and other scenarios where your work may need to look a little bit different. Look at question number five on the bottom of 258. 258, we're given a line that goes through a point and a slope. So that means that work that we had to do with the last problem of finding our slope, we don't have to do anymore. We can simply take our slope and plug it into our equation. So our slope is 4, so our equation should be y equals 4x plus b. This is step 2 that we did in the last problem. We're, we can jump straight to here. From here, we can go to step 3, which is to take our point, 8, 3, and plug 8 into our x value and 3 into our y value. It is important that we plug the correct number in for the correct variable. If you plug 8 in for y and 3 in for x, your value is going to be different. Your number is going to be different when you solve for b, and it's not going to be correct. So you need to make sure x goes into your x value goes in for the x variable, your y value goes in for the y, var y variable. So when we do this, we end up getting 3 equals 4 times 8 plus b, just like that, 4 times 8 is 32, plus b equals 3, subtract 32 from both sides, and then that gives you b is equal to negative 29. So when we go to put this back into our equation, our final equation should look like this, y equals 4x minus 29. So, the graph of a line, we should be able to find the equation from. Even if the y-intercept is a little bit muddy, we're not entirely sure what it is, we can still figure it out. Given a point and a slope, we need to be able to figure out what the equation is. Also, there's a third scenario that we have to be able to do here in the 8th grade, and that is to find the equation of a line that is given through two points. Looking at number 3. The equation of this line that passes through two points. So what we're going to use here in this particular situation is what's called point-slope form. 
point slope form is on here, page 259, in your lesson summary. It looks like this. It looks like this. So, we're going to use this to then plug the points that we have into this equation to figure out what our slope is, take our slope, plug it into our equation, and then plug one of our points into our equation to find and finish off what our y-intercept is. Okay? This is really the one key piece of information, and there, this is really the one key scenario in which point slope form is useful and can be used effectively. Okay? So before we get into this, mark each of these points, x and y, so that way you remember which one is which, and mark them points 1 and point 2. Simply so that way you make sure that y2, 3, goes in the correct spot, y1 goes in the correct spot, x2 goes in the correct spot, and y1, or an x1 goes in the correct spot. You're going to take these four numbers and plug them into here. Be careful. It can get a little bit confusing, and you can end up with the wrong number if you don't put the right thing in the right place, which is why we labeled these ahead of time. So our equation is going to look like this. m equals y2, which is 3, minus y1, which is 5, over x2, which is 2, minus negative 4 for x1, negative 4 like that. So now we have 3 minus 5 divided by 2 minus negative 4. This is going to give us our slope. So this is negative 2. 2 minus negative 4 is positive 6. And so our slope is negative 2 sixths, which we can reduce that down to negative 1 third. So this is our slope now. This is our slope. So we're going to take our equation, y equals negative one-third x plus b. And we're going to plug in one of these two points. It doesn't matter which one. You can use, either use negative four, five, or two, three. I'm going to use two, three. Both of them are positive. So I'm going to plug in two for x and three for y. So my equation looks like this. Three equals negative one-third times two plus b. Multiply 2 times negative 1 third gives me negative 2 thirds. So now my equation, next step looks like this, 3 equals negative 2 thirds plus b. And then from here I'm going to isolate b by adding 2 thirds to both sides. I'm going through this quickly for two reasons. Number one, to not have a super long video for you. I think we're already past that point. <clears throat> and number two, so that way you can stop, pause, stop, pause, and then just continue to make your way through at your own pace. So when we have negative two thirds plus two thirds, that gives us zero, which leaves B over here. Okay, so you have two options. You can either leave three and two thirds and add them together and make it three and two thirds. Or you can do what I would prefer to do, which is turn three into an improper fraction. Okay? So that would be nine over three plus two thirds, which would give me eleven thirds for my value for B. So B equals eleven thirds. So my equation for this line, again, this is one of the scenarios we have to be able to tackle, is y equals negative one third x plus 11 thirds. My M, I said was negative 1 thirds, goes here. My B was 11 thirds, and just goes, plugs into your equation right there. These are the three different types of scenarios we have to be able to tackle and address. Okay, they take time, they take a little bit of practice. So you've got lots of practice problems in this lesson. There are lots within the left exit ticket as well as the problem set for you to work on that are going to be assigned. If you have a question, you need to ask it. Okay, This can get confusing. So if you aren't quite sure, ask your question. Otherwise, good luck. Adios.